Hello friends, welcome back to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats and Groovy Chicks. You know, people ask me to write out exercises or talk about or demonstrate exercises that would be helpful in developing their skills, their technique, their keyboard knowledge, their ears, and so on. And I've come up with something that is really interesting. It's a chromatic scale exercise in which you're playing through the 12 keys but chromatically, ascending from C to C sharp to D to D sharp and you're playing dominant seventh chords or two fives and you're you can improvise on them or play melodies on them or comp on them or play uh, pentatonic scales a variety of things so I'm going to give you a variety of categories to, to, to play this and the backing track will be available to you if you write to me and it, I think it's really fun you know it's eight measures of each key you can expand it to being 16 measures or you can even expand some keys to longer measures if you need them but here we go and the first thing I'm going to do is give you a, a couple of quotes first one is from Leopold Stokowski he said this a painter paints pictures on canvas but musicians paint their pictures on silence I love that and the next one is from Leonard Bernstein he said this Music can name the unnameable and communicate the unknowable. That's another great one. So now here we go with some improvisations on the chromatic scale. People ask me for exercises or drills, so I've come up with this exercise that's really fun to play. And what you're doing is you're improvising on dominant seventh scales or you can call them two fives through all the keys but doing it chromatically rather than by cycle of fifths or cycle of fourths so we'd start out with C7 which could be G minor 7 C7 so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm basically taking a C7 chord inverting it to a C9 in other words putting the 9 up there and then you can you can go up a half step like that but I'm playing on the C7 mixolydian scale now I'm doing a variety of things first I'm just playing basically on the mixolydian scale for eight measures and then I'm going up a half step to the D flat mixol the D flat mixolydian so in other words it has a flat 7 in it and I'm doing that through the whole cycle, all the way chromatically. Now, chromatic movement is really good, because if you get a voicing and you can do... So I'm going to show you comping on this. I'm going to show you how to improvise on it. I'm going to show you how to play melodically on it. I'm sure going to show you how to play in a scale way, and then add chromatics. A variety of ways of doing this, but here's the first one, just starting out with a basic improvisation now. Eight measures each, going chromatically from C to C sharp, or D flat to D to E flat right up the chromatic scale and this is really fun to do and it's challenging because for a pianist as you go up a half step it gets a lot more difficult to go from C to C sharp so here's what it sounds like with the backing track
Okay, so to prepare for this video, you need to be sure you know all your major scales. And so on. In other words, and then to play them with a flat 7. So... Right? So you're going to be playing them in dominant 7s here. But what I'm going to do is, instead of playing C7 there, I'm going to play it up here, inverted with a 9 in it. This is a hipper sounding chord, particularly with a bass line. You're going to hear it with a backing track. So Now playing the 2-5 is a simple maneuver. If this is the C dominant 9, then it's 2 related to would be G minor 7, or G minor 9, and it's just there, you know. Now you can add the 9th there and have this and it becomes a 13th when I go there so this is actually the B form you, this, John Mahegan taught this but it's also in my book because it's the B form would be the third inversion so like this would be G minor 7 in its third inversion and then dropping the root adding the ninth and of course this is C7 becoming a C9, so it's in first inversion. So these are rootless chords. This is the third inversion, this is the first inversion. Now, that's for that position as I go up. But when I get up to uh, here, I'm getting high, so now I take it down to a different inversion. Now I'm going to take the F sharp chord, dominant chord. It's related to would be C sharp. So it'd be C sharp minor there, minor 9, to the F sharp 13 there. So you saw that position, you see, I switched over and then I went to G here and then to uh, A flat here, then A, E minor, A7, like that. See, so it's a very simple move, that one move there is great. So. To understand these, you want to look them up in my book or videos that I have done on these in the past. But you see there, if you put the bass note in, then you can really hear, hear the chord well, you know. So this one here is... Like that. You know, starting out, you can play very simple. They're just, just melodies, you know. But you're trying to just play on that scale now. But simple, in a very simple way. Right? You know, and so on. So I'm going to show you the first one. And you heard the one that's more complete with the half steps and so on. I'm going to show you the one now that is simple, just melodic, and then later I'll show you one that is just comping, and then also one that is mixing it up, and also one that has pentatonic scales. So you're going to see a variety of these, and it's eight measures of each chord. You could make this 16 measures, particularly on the chords that or the scales that you're not as familiar with like C you're probably familiar with D flat maybe not so much so you would, could spend more time on that one
Yeah, so the melodic playing is just try to play melodies with good target tones and passing tones. I'm not playing too many like uh, half steps or chromatic approach tones. You know? You know, little licks you could play and make sure you can play them in every key. Let's see where we F and so on. You know, like um you know. Yeah, that's the preparation for it. And then when you get into it now you're actually gonna try to swing those melodies, you know. So now in the comping, I'm pretty much doing this. The same voicing in the left hand, I might go up to here, which is an inversion. So like, what is that? C7, C7 inverted, add the nine, drop the five. Now invert that, up to there, drop the root, add the ninth. So I have those two positions. I could add that note if I wanted to, the 13 in there. Up here, it's got the 13. You see? How do I know? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So, so now I'm doing like uh, up a half step or down a half step or down a whole step, approaching it. So like it can be. So you can comp all those chromatic things really work nicely, like this. So that full, if you analyze that, is third flat seven nine five root third 
there, doubled on the top. It's a nice full sound, it's an Oscar Peterson chord. And so on, you see? So practicing these chords chromatically is, is really a good exercise. We get too high there. We go, we go down lower. Yeah, so anything chromatic is a really good exercise. Now you may be asking, well, what is the value of this exercise? Well, you know, a lot of tunes are moving all over the place with chromatic, you know. Let's see, I'll give you one, but um, yeah, a lot of tunes move around chromatically with two fives or combinations of things in which two fives are involved and they're moving either in half steps or whole steps and so on. So this enables you to practice a drill which gets you better at executing those things within tunes. Now, you can practice this in keys that you're familiar with or you're most comfortable with, but the ones that you're not comfortable with so much need more work. So you can just isolate those keys, maybe do more of that in the backing track, in other words, extend it in that key. For instance, let's, let's do the, uh, the F sharp dominant, which would be C minor, C sharp minor 7 there to F sharp dominant 7 or F sharp 13 so it would be this one and the scale would be so you have those tricky passing tones you could do or like you see you want it so you could just take it very slowly in that key and try to work out your, your lines. Starting with the scale. You really have to know that scale. So they have that C flat in there. And that F flat. You want to practice that enough so you can just really move or no, maneuver around it. take some work. The other one might be the B7. I'm playing it here. You could play it here. So B7 would be followed by F sharp minor. So it'd be the so inverting it'd be right there. So then you so there. There's the scale. You put the make it Lydian. That'd be sharp, and that'd be... And if it's... It's a... You see how that works? That's the four, the three. If it's Lydian, it's like that. You want to get familiar with playing melodies, you know, whatever it may be, if it's this... You know, so you want to work those out slowly in whatever key you're not used to playing in the most. You want to work on those more so than the ones you're comfortable with. I'm going to take a minute to give you a look into my book. Here's the cover, and it's in a three-ring binder, which makes it very practical. All the pages lie flat on the music stand, and you can take pages out 
to photocopy them. In most books, you can't do that, so it's very practical that way. It's tape here, but anyway, chapter 20 in, vo in book two is on rootless voicing. So you have the two five ones: root position, first inversion, second inversion, and third inversion. I was using the first inversion and the third inversion. So I call the first inversion the A form, like John Mahegan, and also the second version is there, but then the third inversion is the B form. So they're all written out for you. The two five ones, you have them all here, and there's a lot in this book that's very practical, as well as there's songs to play, exercises, and so on. Things that are going to really help you as a resource to develop your skills in jazz piano. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, I hope you benefited from this video. Please write to me. I love to hear from you, and I always try to answer every comment. You have to wait, of course. It might even take me a month. I try to catch up, but if I go away, then I have to, you know, I get behind. But anyway, I always try to catch up and answer every comment as well as every email. If, I, if you don't hear from me, write to me again, because I might have missed, missed your comment or missed your email. But I hope you like this video. If you want the backing track for it, please write to me. I can post that. If I hear from enough people that want it, then I will post it on YouTube and you can use it. So until next time, I'll say in the words of my great friend, Hermie Dressel, he's always up there looking down on us with pity, saying, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.